always an honor to be asked to lead an organization, especially one leading a community of businesses. Yet, what if that ask comes during a time of unprecedented stress for companies? Like during a pandemic? That's exactly what our next guest has done as he has taken over as chair of the Sioux Falls Area Chamber of Commerce. I recently sat down across the table from Dan Doyle at Wine Time on Main to learn more about how his experience as a business attorney at Cutler Law Firm and how a long-term investment in the community has primed him for the challenges ahead. Dan, thanks for joining me here at Wine Time. We have to say cheers. Cheers. I'm drinking the O'Shaughnessy Cabernet Sauvignon. They know I love a good cab here. Yeah, I've got the um, black chicken Zinfandel. So I'm so excited to sit down with you today. I've known you for a while through Cutler Law Firm and your work there, but sure. if people don't know you now, they're about to know you a lot better as you are now coming into the chairman of the board of the Chamber of Commerce. So even in front of a lot more people than you already have been. Yeah. So let's start though with the law part. Sure. Why'd you want to become a lawyer and go into business law? It kind of sounds a little, a little dry to me. <laughs> I knew I wanted to get into business a long time ago. My father was an accountant. I grew up in an accounting family. So I knew that I wanted to be involved in business. Um, I went to Nebraska, got my accounting degree. Um, some various things in the industry were, seemed to be changing at the time, and so I kind of wanted to go a different route. I still wanted to be involved in and have a, a personal relationship with and work with clients and individuals, and I thought the best opportunity to do that was in law, to kind of be that trusted advisor of um, my clients and, and be along with them uh, along all their uh, struggles and, and uh, celebrations that they have along the way. That's interesting because I think probably the best asset to somebody that you're representing is the fact that you had that ingrained love of business before you had anything else. Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, I kind of used to joke that one of the things that was beneficial about having a background in accounting in business law was that you had the um, vocabulary of the, of the conversation that would occur both in your uh, laborious contracts, but also in the in the constituents that you're working with, whether that be the various tax advisors, accountants, financial advisors, and um, other members that people uh, add to their uh, business team. I love that you say that part of your love of business and, and becoming a business attorney started from your dad as an accountant, because I know your dad, he's also very involved in the community, so like transitioning to that role now with the chamber and community development, probably also something sort of ingrained in you for a very, very long time. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, he, both he and my mom uh, were involved in various ways. My, a lot of my dad's business that he did was actually outside of Sioux Falls, so he's actually got become more involved in the Sioux Falls community now in retirement than he was before, where it was more in his industry up in the region. But then my mom um, was very involved in um, her church uh, uh, with Avera, with the race against breast cancer going all the way back to its origins. And um, so I, I watched them be uh, volunteers and um, people that were interested in giving back to their um, community, both micro and macro, and, and uh, kind of that was just ingrained as something we do. So. Now, going into more about being kind of at the helm of the chamber right now, I think every chamber chair probably has a ton of assets that they add to that role, but right now, coming into kind of a crazy environment, we don't know what's gonna happen, having a business attorney, sort of, sure. that seems like the stars kind of aligned. Like, how do you feel about kind of rolling into this with such a unique skill set that can really be very advantageous. Sure. As a lot of things change legally. And right. Well, I hope I hope it, it becomes or is beneficial to us. You know, um, I think that uh, with all the interesting things that are going on, one is um, I'd like to think that I will have had uh, experiences along the way with my clients and the challenges that they've had to endure and hopefully how they've persevered through those and we can share some of those best practices with our members and the various programs we do. And then also, um, you know, looking ahead, we're going to have a, a very interesting time um, with government and, and uh, uh, one of the integral roles and the things that I really um, kind of take the most pride in with the chamber is the work that we do, the advocacy work that we do, particularly with the legislature and peer. And so, they're going to be involved in a lot of important conversations uh, this year and uh, going forward. And so um, having a, a full understanding of, of 
or a better understanding, I suppose, nothing, never a full understanding, but of what, what are the things that are important to businesses, small businesses, various businesses throughout the industries that are located here in South Dakota are important and what we need to, to work on um, to keep um, thriving the way that we have. I'm really excited to see really that what happens with you sort of in that chairman role because I think that is a huge asset and times are challenging. We're in a pandemic, there's a lot going on yeah. and so it really, really helps to have that expertise. So I think one of the things that I'm really excited about is the, um, the board that we have. We're, we're, we've had a strong board for a long time at the chamber, but I, I do think that um, some of the folks we have coming on and some of the folks that are already on the board uh, really will serve us well um, as we traverse this interesting time. Um, one of the things I think that the chamber's done uh, for the last few years, um, maybe a little bit out front of, of others, is we've really been deliberate about making sure that our board and its composition is reflective of um, our evolving community. And so we've got voices from all over uh, the spectrum and uh, I think that they're gonna have a lot of uh, uh, insight into what's going on throughout the community and how we can best address it. Knowing what you know now and kind of experiencing the life you've had so far, what would you go back and tell like the younger Dan Doyle just starting out or maybe advice you give some of your young interns that are coming through the Cutler Law Firm? Grow your own book of business and have your own work and not be working for another attorney's clients or on their projects and so to be able to do that, I think you have to be out, get involved, meet people, show them that, that you care about what's going on in the community, in their lives, and that you take um, a lot of pride in the, the work that you do. And probably yeah. pick a good law firm to share your business with. Absolutely. You gotta go to the <laughs> We're happy to help out right? yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with me, enjoy some delicious wine. I can't wait to see what is in this year ahead at yeah. the chamber and everything else you're doing. Cheers. Wine Time on Main is continuing to take steps to protect your health and maintain social distancing. They are now open from 4 p.m. until 10 p.m. Tuesdays through Saturday. You'll find them in downtown Sioux Falls at 330 South Main Avenue in the Washington Square Building, across the street from the Washington Pavilion. Join them for happy hour from 4 until 6, Tuesday through Friday. Wine Time on Main also has a complete list of wines available for off sales. You'll find that on their website at winetimeonmain.com. Just place your order online and it will be available for curbside pickup.